Hey, yo guys, it is me, Happy Sarakan. Welcome back to Last on Earth Survival. So today I'm gonna share with you all the things and all the mistakes that newcomers make. So we've all been newcomers. I was a newcomer. And if you are an advanced player and you're watching this video right now, you were a newcomer as well. So a lot of us were making those mistakes. And I would like to just point it out that this entire list that I'm gonna say here doesn't go in any particular order. All of these tips are important. So without any hesitation, I don't wanna waste your time. So let's just hop inside. So kick this list off. We're gonna start off from Bunker Alpha and even though I said that this entire list doesn't go in any particular order, Bunker Alpha is the most important tip in this entire list because Bunker Alpha, as I said many many times, it's gonna be your bread and butter. Like literally 60% of your entire game here is going to be just Bunker Alpha so obviously there is a lot of room for improvement for this Bunker Alpha and there is a lot of place to make your mistakes there. So the reason why I included here this Bunker Alpha is to mention that people do not know especially newcomers how to use their guns probably the most popular question that newcomers ask is how to get guns and again you can get guns from bunker alpha but i think that a lot of newcomers don't realize that in order to get guns you have to actually save your guns up and even when i started playing this game i would go to random zones such as let's say limestone ridge and i would start farming these zones with a glock when i found this glock from that a plane crash event i would just use it basically everywhere and then i wouldn't have any guns so I think that a lot of newcomers make this huge mistake that they don't use their guns properly. Like, just leave them at the base, never use them. That's it. It's not like, oh, it's like I want to do bunker alpha with my guns. No, you don't want to do bunker alpha with your guns. The only place where would you use your guns are going to be on that blind one. And even then you can deal with the blind one inside of this bunker alpha with your melee weapons. Also, you could use your guns on frenzy giants. But again, I highly suggest you doing and clearing this entire bunker alpha only with only melee weapons using wall trick already made that video about entire like wall trick tutorial so as you can see you can get guns from bunker alpha but in order to save up those guns you don't have to use them just keep them at your base and then you will use them on better things as bunker bravo or like whatever other thing you come up with but to save up guns don't use them that's like the the best tip ever and also just quickly i want to mention it that there will be link down in the description below where you can find my free to play playlist so i basically started an account where i don't spend a single penny i grind from like level one to like whatever level 80 or something we're doing that bunker alpha and i share all the tips that i know about the game so make sure to check that playlist out if you are a new player here in the game so now going to some other tips that are going to be a little bit less important than this bunker alpha is that when i started playing the game i would farm random zones way too frequently and i wouldn't know what i'm doing so when i started playing the game i would start farming like random zones i would go here to these limestone cliffs i would farm here for some stone boom and i don't even know why i needed that stone i would farm for it i would farm for for this place boom and I would spend like an hour here in the game and actually a progress nothing so this tip is again somewhat about bunker alpha because you can spend here playing this game for five hours but if you're not doing bunker alpha you're not gonna progress here in this game so you can spend only 30 minutes a day in bunker alpha and you will make more progress than a person who plays this game for 10 hours a day without touching touching bunker alpha so I think you can just imagine how important this bunker alpha is so I believe that now we are done with these bunker alpha tips and another tip is that a lot of people start raiding way too early and I do know that raiding here in this game is really fun and a lot of people whenever they see a video that hey you can raid they're just gonna go to a raid they're gonna finish uh, all of these tasks from raiders and they go do their first raid then uh, they are happy but after that when they come back to the base they don't realize that there is like this threat timer and during this threat timer your base can be attacked and if it's gonna be attacked all of your items in this base or most of your items are just gonna disappear so at this point a lot of players just quit the game because it's super disappointing you know you play this game for like a couple of hours for a week or something and then boom you've done your raid and all the items that you grinded for that week month or whatever are just gone so a huge tip don't start raiding too early so better start focusing on building your base rather than trying to rush and do that raid but if you really really want to do it there is a quick tip you can actually leave all of your stuff at that bunker alpha and bunker bravo because there are those lockers up the very top and they do not reset so you can store all of your items that you find you can just move all of your items to those lockers but the point is it's not really that efficient because it's going to take a lot of and a lot of energy just to move all of your items from one place to another place and you will have to just keep moving them constantly and it's really not efficient it takes way too much time so i really wouldn't suggest you doing that unless you just really really want to try to raid once but you're gonna get annoyed for moving all of your items from one place to another place and at the same time developers said many many times that the best place to where you can hide your items are going to be at your base because this is going to be the 
safest place to keep them. Developers have mentioned in the past that maybe one day the lockers from Bunker Alpha and Bunker Bravo are gonna disappear, so I wouldn't take any risks. And if you just started playing the game, probably don't hide those items over there. And now let's go to actually another epic tip about the base building, because you will, in order to raid, because eventually in the future you will want to raid and you will probably have to raid, because raiding is fun, but in order to do it, you will have to craft a bit of a safe base, protected base. And to do this, I have one tip that I used here myself. Don't focus, first of all, on building your walls, but actually focus on upgrading your chests into racks and then upgrading your racks into... Yeah, that's it. I meant to say that your chest into trunks and your trunks into racks because one rack here can store 75 items. So obviously that it's way, way easier to protect your one rack than protecting like five bigger chests. I mean, it's just logic. Even though crafting these racks is super expensive, they require a lot of it, a lot of steel. But again, believe me and trust me when I'm saying that it's gonna pay you off in the long run. Because also another thing that a lot of people see is that you can have here a huge base. They see a lot of these tiles here everywhere and they think that they have to craft here such a huge base. The point is, this is not Minecraft. This is not whatever other survival game that you have played. Here, you don't have to craft a big base and a lot of players Players, they want to have, let's say, like some sort of special room for them. Oh, this is going to be my bedroom. This is this is going to be my garden. That's where I'm going to do this. This is going to be my like, like whatever other room. I'm going in this room. I'm going to keep only my guns in this room. I'm going to keep only this. This is not such a game where you can allow yourself to craft a pretty base if you want to raid. If you don't want to raid, then yeah, obviously you can craft whatever you want. But the point is, there are zombies that are going to destroy your base every 24 hours. So you can't craft any level one or level two walls. So again, you're not going to be able to to craft like whatever pretty base or something your base here has to be like a warehouse literally just like for me as you see i have nothing here just bunch of bunch of racks and that's it i don't have here a huge base obviously this place is a bit better looking but i've been playing here this game for two years so again trust me on this don't try to craft a super pretty base after you're done crafting your racks start crafting your like one by one steel room or even 3x3 three three steel room, depending on how much time you play a day and on how really badly you want to start to raid. Because I started crafting my this entire base from only 1x1 one one steel room and then I expanded it to 3x3 three three steel room. It took me quite a while. I think it took me like half a year or a year just to craft one 3x3 three three steel room, but it's totally possible. So don't be one of those people who start crafting a huge base and then they realize that it's going to take them 84 years to craft it. Craft one rack and then start upgrading it and expand from there. Don't bite on something that you can't chew. Does that make any sense? And another kind of a mistake that newcomers make, this is more of a tip than a mistake, but it's really important to share it in this video. So we're gonna hide here myself right now. So when you go into your settings and you're gonna see here this game server, uh, server one, or it's gonna be server five or whatever server you're playing on, just click on it, boom, and you're gonna see this huge string of numbers. Make sure to take a screenshot of that and save it somewhere on your phone because if you're gonna lose your account or whatever, let's say if you're gonna switch your phone and somehow some way you're gonna lose this account that you're playing on right now with this number you're gonna be able to contact support you're gonna be able to contact last day on earth support and with this number they will restore your account so this is more of a tip but a lot of newcomers do not know about this so screenshot that and play safe so now let's talk about my favorite tip probably from this list because a lot of people do not know how to get their coal properly so in this video once and for all i'm gonna explain for you how to get this coal because i've seen even like kind of pro players that have been playing this game for half a year and they do not know the best way to get coal so the point is you can smelt your steel you can smelt a lot of other stuff with your planks or wood so what i see a lot of people do they're just either gonna place simple wood inside of this like refined furnace or they're gonna place their planks inside of this refined furnace and this is wasting a lot of and a lot of items don't do this you're just wasting a lot of your wood the best way to smelt your stuff is just going to be by using your charcoal so place charcoal inside of your refined melting furnace and inside of whatever other places that you're going to do it inside of your simple furnace. Always use coal. Coal is going to be the most efficient fuel here in the game. But a lot of people do not know how to get coal properly. So this is literally the most efficient way to get coal. You have to burn coal. I mean, you have to use coal here as the fuel and burn your planks. This is how you're supposed to get coal here. Do not uh, do here like this here, just for the sake of education. It even hurts for me to do this, but don't place here these logs and don't place here coal up the top, uh, those planks up the top to get coal. This is super inefficient. You're just wasting items. And also don't do here like this. Don't place planks 
to burn planks here. This is as well super inefficient, the most efficient way to get coal. And this is how you should be doing all the time is just by burning your stuff here like this. Burn planks by using coal. This is how you do it. Like there's no other way around it. This is gonna be the most efficient way to do it. I do know that it's gonna take a bit more time, but don't waste your logs or anything. Just cut your logs into planks here. Just like that, bada boom, and then switch your planks into coal and then use your coal everywhere else to get your steel, to get your iron, to get your aluminum and everything else, to get your carrots, you have to be using coal. This is very important tip. And I was very surprised to see that even some, as I said, even like pro players that have been playing this game for half a year, they didn't even know this. So I think this is super important. That's why I want to stress it out. So another thing that beginners used to overlook or they just don't like doing it is picking up a lot of and a lot of grass. Like, believe me, grass is like probably top three or top five most important here resources in the game when you start to play the game always pick up every single piece of grass that you find you can get grass like in this uh, pine grove or in the green forest zone or whatever pick it up everywhere because it is super important with that grass you will be able to pick up seeds you have a chance to get carrot seeds and from one carrot seed you're gonna get two carrots so just from 10 seeds you're gonna get stack of carrots and then you want to smelt your carrots uh, i mean you cook your carrots into cooked carrots because those cooked carrots are gonna restore 20 health and again you want to cook your carrots with that tip that i just shared with you with that cold and you are gonna use all of those carrots to basically progress further in the game to farm other zones and most importantly farm your bunker alpha because carrots are gonna be your best friend till probably like level 100 and even probably over that level you're still gonna be using carrots even sometimes I'm using here carrots here myself because carrots are super awesome the best food here in the game and just so many newcomers do not know about that they just they just miss grass they just go farm these chests the point is chests here in these locations are kind of important but you would rather skip those chests and pick up all of the grass inside of these pine zones or something rather than opening up all the chests there. And also another really important tip by picking up that grass, you will be able to craft your sewing table. So after you're gonna craft your sewing table, you will be able to transform your grass into pieces of cloth. And then with those pieces of cloth, you're gonna start to make your bandages because as you can see, you only need five pieces of cloth to make your one bandage. So those grass are seriously just gonna be like healing items. You're picking up grass, you're getting your carrot seeds. And at the same time, you're basically getting your bandages. So really important tip, but a lot of people don't do it. This is gonna like save you a tremendous amount of time. So now speaking about crafting items, a lot of people do not craft enough crowbars, especially beginners. They try to focus on whatever other stuff because they either seen a screenshot or like some whatever other player told them that, wow, crowbar is bad or like the best item is machete, use machete or something. And they're trying to spend all of their life and all of their resources to craft this machete when they're like level 50 or something and they barely have any resources to like cook those carrots or something. They barely have enough resources to farm like orange zone or something to, I mean that yellow zone just because somewhat something told them the best and the most cost efficient weapon in this game is going to be crowbar because crowbar costs here only seven iron bars and three leather so in order to get that crowbar let's say if you just started playing this game today just go to let's say to whatever this limestone cliff to this like orange stone zone grind it a little bit there you're gonna get enough iron at the same time make sure to hunt all the deer there because you're gonna dry that leather and you're gonna be able to craft this crowbar you unlock crowbar if i'm not mistaken at like level 16 or at level 21 but you unlock it like really really early in the game this is the best weapon that you can craft because cleaver costs more you have to use here a little bit more leather and a couple of pine planks torch is just a torch totally useless makeshift bat i mean it costs three duct tape like it's super expensive for the thing that it does and spear spear is cool to farm like green zone or something spear is definitely epic to do some sneak damage but your best friend that you'll be farming your bunker elf and all the other items are just gonna be crowbar craft crowbars because even advanced players use crowbars to farm other zones when they don't have any melee weapons the cheapest and the fastest melee weapons to craft and on top of all of that they are really good so another thing that newcomers do not know and they tend to quit the game because of that is dying in simple zones so for those who do not know if you're gonna die let's say in any of the farming zones such as like whatever these stone zones whatever these oak whatever these northern zones or whatever these pine zones you are gonna lose all of your items Yes, exactly. If you're gonna go here to the pine woods, you're gonna farm there and hey, then you're gonna be killed by like some sort of zombies that sits all of your items that you had on you are gonna be gone. All of your backpacks, all of your 
armor, all of your guns and everything are just gonna be gone if you went with all of that stuff to your pine wood. So be very careful, be very cautious with what you're doing there. Pay attention to your health because there might be some AI, some bot players that will spawn with VSSs, that will spawn with like whatever guns or something. And if you're not playing, let's say with sound or whatever, if you're just in your inventory, you might just die. So seriously, be careful and pay attention to what you're doing here because a lot of newcomers just die in these zones with a lot of items. They're gonna farm like for an hour, especially a lot of players who just unlock these oak, uh, oak zones. Even I died there myself after like half an hour, an hour of grinding. You just gotta be grinding between these two, uh, between these both zones to grind a lot of and a lot of oak. And then a guy is gonna spawn with VSSs and like three, four bullets. You can die easily and all of your progress for one hour that you've been grinding is just gonna be gone. So be very careful. This is a very important tip that most of the newcomers didn't even know. So there are a couple of locations in this game that where you're gonna die, your body is still gonna stay, but there's one bot. So Crooked Creek Farm here, if you're gonna die inside, your loot here is not going to disappear unless if the timer runs out. But let's see if I died here at Crooked Creek Farm, but I still did not pick up all of my items there and I decided to, let's say, go and farm a little bit of motel and then I died in motel as well without, without picking up items inside of my Crooked Creek farm, that body is just going to disappear. So if you died in Crooked Creek farm, go there and pick up your body. Same thing is gonna happen with motel. These both locations, in these both locations, your body does not disappear. Your body does not disappear in Bunker Bravo. Same thing applies to Bunker Bravo. And then there are last two locations, Bunker Alpha, body doesn't disappear in Bunker Alpha and body doesn't disappear in this Blackboard Police apartment. But again, if you're gonna die on your way to these locations, your body is just going to disappear. So if you died in Blackport Police Department, you have to go and pick up that body loot. Otherwise, it will disappear because chances are that you'll just die in like whatever other zone if you're gonna like, I'll pick it up later. Don't do it. And the last but not least is going to be a tip about energy management. So a lot of newcomers just when they log into the game, they do not know what loot they're gonna get from these locations and they just start traveling, let's say to these limestone cliffs. Boom. They're gonna grind over there a little bit. Then they're gonna just go to this motel they gotta grind there a little bit and then they just look and boom they have like 30 energy left or something and they do not know what to do and they just put the phone down and that's it they didn't do anything so the tip here is to know what you want from your game and again what you want to want from this game is just this bunker alpha i don't know that it sounds fun but you have to be constantly keeping that bunker alpha in the back of your head if you're not farming bunker alpha then you have to be farming whatever zones you have to be farming resources for your bunker alpha if you're not doing that then chances are that most likely you're just wasting time here in the game and you're just wasting your energy because you don't have to be playing last in survival for like 10 hours a day or something i think you can do playing in like half an hour in an hour a day i don't know that a lot of people just go and farm like whatever chests in these like orange or red zones or something and if you do not know what you want to get from these chests then most likely don't bother opening up these chests and just focus on the things that you know and on the things that you need and also now speaking about these zones so a lot of people do not know what kind of items to pick up their inventory just gets gets overfilled or whatever so my big tip is that if you're farming like whatever farm zones just as i said like those pine woods like oak zones or like those stone zones or whatever you're not gonna find there any rare loot the rarest loot that you're gonna find are gonna be like weapons and c4 so those things are pretty common and pretty obvious and just pick those up but in the beginning there are gonna be a lot of items like those bolts wiring so and you're not and you're not gonna remember all of them all at once and don't bother about them. Just pick up items that you know that are good. And if your inventory is full, don't bother about like, oh, I'm not, I didn't pick up transistors and I'm not sure if transistors are good or bad. Like nothing is really that great. There is nothing that you're going to miss something super valuable inside of these zones. So just pick up items that you need to pick up. And now let's quickly go through all the zones on where you're going to get which items. So inside of these stone zones, you're going to get stone and iron. Obviously, you can find there a little bit of wood or whatever. But the most important stuff that you're going to get here, just stone and iron. Inside of these wooden zones, obviously, you're just going to get wood. Also, you can find there a little bit of stone in these zones. Also, you can get some oak wood inside of the pine woods here, but you don't get really a lot of oak there. And I would just suggest you're not grinding for that oak because it's not efficient to grind for oak inside of the pine woods. And again, you can get oak inside of these oak zones and you can get steel. Uh, I mean, that copper and then smell that copper into steel inside of the northern location, inside of the frosty backwoods and wooden foothills. Inside of the Crooked Creek Farm, you can get melee blueprints. So let's say if you want to upgrade your machete or or something you'll have to do this quick farm and hope that you're gonna get some of your 
my Shetty blueprints. Obviously, inside you can get other miscellaneous items. And most importantly, you can also find here some chopper parts when that barn opens up. But the main point of this Crooked Creek farm are just your melee blueprints. Bunker Bravo is really for high level players, like for level 180 and higher probably. Because it requires like over 20 guns just to do one run here. To do one full Bunker Bravo run. So it is really, really for like advanced and end game players. But inside of this Bunker Alpha, you can find all the parts required to assemble your ATV. And ATV is this bad boy. After you unlock your ATV, you'll be able to unlock this swamp location here. Boom, and then grind that swamp location. And now again, speaking of that Bunker Alpha, inside of the Bunker Alpha, you will be able to get all of your resources required to assemble your chopper. And at the same time, this is the best way to get guns in the game. And also inside of the Bunker Alpha, you can get a bunch of other items such as aluminum bars, thick cloth. So Bunker Alpha all in all is the best place here in the game. And then inside of this Black 4 PD, inside of the police department, you can find here your gun blueprints. But again, don't really rush for these gun blueprints because developers have removed all the carbon composites, factory parts and lenses here from Blackboard PD. The only way to get them is through that Bunker Bravo. But again, to do Bunker Bravo, you have to get strong weapon mods. So in order to get strong weapon mods, you will just have to be recycling your guns. And I wouldn't just really suggest you focusing on that. I highly suggest you just doing that Bunker Alpha a lot and a lot after you're going to gather enough guns and after you'll know what you're doing with the game, then you'll be able to start recycling guns to get your blueprints that you got here from police department and then you'll be able to start doing your bunker bravo and the last tip just as the cherry on the top of the cake if you want to recycle any guns inside of that recycler recycle only full durability guns because like 30 percent durability like 20 percent durability guns aren't going to give you anything valuable they're not going to give you factory parts you have to recycle 100 percent full durability glocks or like m16s or ak's or something don't recycle ak's or m16s recycle only glocks if you're going to be recycling anything but you have to be recycling those full durability weapons in order to get factory parts carbon composites or like lenses. So I highly suggest you checking out my free to play playlist or click on the second card and you'll go to my most recent video or hop over to my channel, go to playlist and there you'll find a lot of other games that I played here on the channel. If you're not subscribed yet, definitely make sure to drop the subscribe button and notification bell to not miss any future videos. And consider following me on Instagram or Twitter at Epicyric. Mm -hmm. Yep.